Lovers, I think we're going to do something a little different here today. We're going to take you back in time. Uh, some of you probably wonder if I've always been here, if I'm self-employed and for how long self is such. Well, uh, anyway, my parents were always into woodworking. They could care less about this car stuff or anything even to do with it. And I started this all on my own. And, uh, there were some bumps along the way. It might look like everything went smooth and perfect by looking around here and all, but there were some struggles, believe me. And uh, I had some actual footage from years back in pictures. I thought I'd put a little something together for you folks to watch, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. So, let's get started. Well, here's a look at my very first one-car garage. In the mid-70s, I bought a house, and it was nice because it had this. Yeah, narrow, but I finished it off, insulated it, and wired it, so I finally had a place to work out of. Uh, the furnace, my dad had a neighbor that uh, was a furnace guy, and I got that from him, I remember, right, for 40 bucks, and welded up the heat exchanger, and then I had a good furnace. And uh, it was nice, because I finally had a place to do some painting and do stuff for other people after my regular job at night. And here's one of my projects I was doing in that garage. I had an engine for my Jeep that I was putting in. My girlfriend helped me out on that one. And uh, anyway, I actually had a little bit of film from that. So that's what you see running in the background. Looking through these pictures gave me an idea. Sometime in the future, I'll put a video together about my Jeep. From the suspension, to the paint job, to the dash, to the engine. That was all in-house built, and I actually have video of it in action. Well, thought I'd show you that engine does run. My girlfriend starts it up and stokes the, the throttle a few times. Okay, back to the one-car garage, which I worked out of for many years. This footage here was from 1982. Friends stopped by to help me tear the old garage down, and then I was going to put up a 25 by 30, which is the biggest that they would allow for the property where I was on. Here's a look at a project I was doing back in them days. It's a 73 Mustang. It came in on a flatbed, and as you can see, it had a bit of a rust problem. At this point, this is where I was just starting to become self-employed, and uh, one one shouldn't expect to get all the uh, gravy work, so you kind of take what comes along your way. So a little while back, I went over nights to help a friend out who bought a '66 Chevelle. I told him he should have spent another 20 bucks and got a better car to start with. Kind of had that thought looking at these pictures here too. <laughs> To gain a little extra room in the shop, I had to compress her outside in that hut. Well, I'm all done here. I'm as far as the owner asked me to go. He wished to hang the tin himself, and he did get back to me. He said that everything went together nice and drove down the road good. So, another old car lives on. This is my friend Tom that still helps me out on projects today. Hey tubers, I had to put this in so you could see it. The cement guys got me all set up here. We talked, he was supposed to be doing six inches, and we were actually getting five. Well, I didn't complain. And at the very end, he did do a nice job, let me get that across, but at the very end, he asked for more money yet even after he was done. So, let me play the tape for you. Sometimes video is not a bad thing to have. We got good six inches in here now. Well, here's what we showed anyway with our tape measure. And of course, at the end of the job, he told me we owed him hundreds more. So, I invited him in the house and showed him the video of what we seen. And all of a sudden, oh gee, the original price was just fine. Where this older footage is so grainy, let's do some more picture in picture. 
back then there was good money in doing builders that's where you buy a smashed vehicle from the insurance company fix it up and resell it this is one of the three builders I did which paid for the Jeep that orange Datsun sitting there and that was a free car uh, somebody called me they were gonna junk it and anyway I dragged it home put a head gasket in it and actually put a paint job on that one too drove it for some time and then sold it on the right there that's my dad and a guy up there on the roof that was one of dad's friends from church and he was an actual carpenter and uh, the guy did fantastic work and was very nice on his pricing this is the part of doing any building that I more so enjoy doing the wiring and plumbing and running the airlines the shop build where I'm at now that'll be up shortly I think some of you are gonna be surprised when you see it what it looked like when I first came here in 1986 it's quite different here's dad putting some sheeting on check out the look I get here that dang kid he's got the camera out again The white door you see above the entrance door made it possible to get long items upstairs for storage. And that's the back side of the main switch panel which would be located out in the work area. We're looking through the back door of the shop there. And as we go to the right, the dirt pile there, that's from the trench that was dug to get water out there. So inside the building here you can see that one stall is full length. In the middle there, that was a parts room. And to the right, that was the office, and you can see the switch panel there, too. The circuit breaker box, that's located inside the office, which we had to still build the final wall for that, and the parts room. At a desk there in the office, that was actually one of them ones for your kid, and I had it sitting on some 4x4s. The wildlife people. The wildlife. Boy, was that ever a good feeling to be able to get back to work again here. And, of course, I guess that would be another repaint I was doing. A lot of rusty cars. I got pretty good at them things. Coming up, I have a clip I put together for you folks of what went bad when I was at this place here. Then we'll move along to the shop I'm at now with the build for that one. Got some pretty good stuff for you. And we'll take one last quick look of this one here and move along. Hey, tubers. I thought I'd have you invite you into the house here for this part of the conversation. So, you're probably wondering where I'm going with all of this. That shop that you're looking at the build video right now. I, was, I had the luxury of working out of that for four years. I got my resale permit. I got a bookkeeper. Things were going real well. And you see how tight everything was shoehorned there for all the houses. Well, anyway, one neighbor shut me down. So it's like I had to leave now. I had a good business going. I had to scrounge up a lot of money, yada, yada, to try to make something happen. Actually, to tell you, I was on a test drive with a problem child car with a scanner. I come by here. I always wanted this place. There's sign off fronts for sale by owner. There's a lot of stuff that flows. It's pretty neat when that stuff does, yeah. So, anyway. I want to get the house, you go to the bank, and the old guy slides his glasses down and he says, son, you don't make enough money to make the payment on that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm aware of that. Well, how are you going to pay for it? He says, well, employees and overtime for me. Well, he kind of gave me the rundown on the lecture. And 
anyway, I did get the loan to get this. Now, what I ended up doing was I had other people living with me and also got employees. But the kicker is to get my building together and you know you can't afford to pay everybody to do so I was doing a lot of seven in the morning every day till midnight three in the morning a lot of long days a lot of stress I wouldn't ever want to relive live that part of my life again but if you want to live your dream I guess you got to pay the price so anyway as you can see now yeah it's things are going quite well but don't let negative chase you away from your dreams you always think positive if somebody else can build it you should be able to fix it if it's broke already take it apart see how it works there's so much stuff that one can learn all by yourself because I never had any teachers and yeah that makes it a little tougher and then now at YouTube you folks can watch all these videos learn all kinds of stuff it's almost like you're getting things handed to you it's great so, but where I, I wanted to share that with you to let you know, because you always see everything around here nice hunky-dory. Uh, basically, it'd be tough to do it again because of the start out, but if you know you're going to succeed, that would have made it easier for me. But yeah, it was no cakewalk here. But I don't want to scare you away from your dreams. You have them, make them happen. Kind of where I'm going with this. Let's get back to the video. I hope I didn't yabble you out. And I hope you're enjoying it. I'm kind of like, eh, but I'm doing what I can for you folks to get something quality together. So let's continue. You know, back in 1986, when I first arrived here, my friend was coming out to see me. He was always in the video. So that's his footage on the upper left. I thought it would be neat to have a picture-in-picture. Picture. Oh, had a change of gear there. And uh, tried to match my speed with his. And you can see some of the buildings on the right are the same. And, of course, there has been new ones. You know, where you folks always seen on the video where this place is all done, this will be good because now you get to see what it was really like when I first got here. Leaf trees have been replaced with pine trees. Come up here and turn in the driveway, which is no longer there. As Mr. Obvious would have noted, it's now on the left. So if we take a shortcut here through the trees and put you another picture in picture. The six foot trench there was to get water and sewer lines from the house to the shop. The man that dug that trench for me also had some used steel beams. So I went and checked them out and they were much more cost effective than purchasing new ones. Let me borrow his John Deere dozer, which that really came in handy where I filled around the building to accommodate for that 18 inch height difference. Now that 18 inch thing, you probably don't quite get that yet. So I have some current footage that I shot of hurdles and building features that I'll be showing you. So that'll all be coming up shortly and covered in that. And now for the day after the next. It's presented to you by Ford, the people who build Ford pickups. Well, the house does look the same, but we got all these noises over in this area here. I went down to Chicago last weekend, somebody took the hubcap. And this would be the backbone for the addition. 
Anyway, you see them two beams sitting up there. The left one had to be slid over about five feet and it was stacked down. That's where the oil tanks sit. In the back, I'm filling in to accommodate for that 18 inch height difference. Really, I took his hub cap, don't tell him though. Well, folks, that's it for the day after the next day. It's been brought to you by Ford, the people who make pickup trucks, and also by Chevrolet. Another day, no more dollars. Before I even owned this place, I made multiple trips over here checking out the barn. I'm trying to figure out how I was going to structure everything, and the other thing, there were some hurdles that had to be overcome, so let's take a look at a few. Well, the first hurdle was the previous owner told me the barn always flooded in this corner in the spring. So, conveniently, it sat on an 18 inch curb around the entire perimeter. So, around the barn here, this is all up 18 inches from what it would have been originally. And if you're talking about a storage unit, that's been filled multiple feet. And my friend was kind enough to lend me his bender so I could do all the door jams in the aluminum and finish it off with your vinyl brick mold. The electrical service and gas comes from the house where it's tapped in. If you ever need a gas line made up, uh, public service does your plastic one and they even put a trace wire in it in case you ever have, a, have to have a locator guy come out for you. And then the three pipes, I have uh, the 220 and a 3-0 copper coming in to feed the shop. And then I have security and other things pulled through these other two and along with an air hose and you're probably like, why an air hose? Well, the House Stone Foundation is from 1903, and having an air chisel in the basement makes it kind of nice when you want to do a little service work on that. Dog. <laughs> I gotta tell you a neat little story here quick. Uh, my friend started on the soffit, and it was a Friday night, so... Him and his helpers went away for the weekend. Well, I used his equipment and finished off all the soffit other than So my friend shows up Monday morning with his helper and I got everything done but this right here And he's like, oh you dirty dog, you took all the gravy And I'm like, well what do you expect? I says, you guys are out fishing, drinking beer, having fun and I had to sit here and work So anyway, little tale for you folks, I hope you enjoyed it Years ago, we had a hailstorm that wrecked the skylights, and of course the water came in, wrecked the drywall. So then I made them skylights. They're two foot by eight foot, stainless steel frame on a frame, and to top them off, I used the uh, smoked Lexon. So you never have to worry about them breaking again. Yeah, here's a look from the inside, and I got some tabs welded on there. You can take that quarter inch bolt out. There's one on the opposite end, and Pop the top frame off and you got it in your hand. Now for safety while working on the barn roof, you got a cable going across just on the back side of the peak of the barn roof with three anchors and a cable. So all you got to do is pop out that skylight that's up on the third floor there and hop onto the roof. You don't even need a ladder. Now to get on the roof on this half, all you got to do is open the window up on the third floor and hop on. No ladder needed. How cool is that? The awning actually had a purpose other than just being a visual. When the tin roof was on the barn, a lot of times ice would build up on it and it would want to slide down and possibly take out somebody's windshield. So that worked really good for a catch on such situations. So many good ideas that were here were passed along from people that would suggest things. That barn board, uh, 
this place came with a whole pile of barn board. You got it worked for me. He says, why don't you put that on the front of the barn? I'm like, yeah. Well, anyway, he'd work, he'd, uh, he'd actually did that job for me. After he'd get done with cars for the day, he was putting it up. I'm real happy with how it turned out. Well, my friend Tom always helped me out. This is a job here that I did for him. It had a manual trance with the three on the tree. We replaced the engine, put an automatic transmission in, added power steering, put a tilt steering column in it. A six-way power bench seat, carpeting, clearance lights, rear tinted slide-by window, new rockers, door bottoms, and we topped it off with a new two-tone paint job. Let's head in and I'll show you some more features. Now in the future, I'll get you folks together a detailed video on the shop, more so. This one's more or less on features of the building. I've been asked what's in the silo. So let's have a look. What's in the silo? Turtle food, yeah. Well, what I wanted to show you this is that's pretty much so ground level right there. Give you an idea how much it's been filled around the building here. I like wiring. It's got electricity, I'm in. It has a backup battery for my security system. And you can unplug it and put on the adapters I got made so you can keep the car powered while you're changing out the battery. But we're getting off the subject again here. So I'm gonna put this away and we'll get back to the radio shack. <laughs> Now, before I built this, I had five sets of floor plans, for different layouts. Uh, one of them would have been, there would have been a, another stall here, which then I would have had five total. And another one, the office would have been in a different area, things as such. But the big thing was for the body shop, I always wanted to make sure I could close that off so I didn't get overspray on people's cars down here. And I didn't know if they were going to force me to put a spray booth in. So what my intentions were with this layout was then I could have had the spray booth coming through here along there. Then there could have been a walkway right through this area, which then you didn't have to run cars outside in the winter. You could just run them from the body shop right into the spray booth instead of out in the cold back in the warm. Now the entire building has been done in 5 8 fire code drywall and 200 sheets was real close to the count for that. I'll give you a little tour of the body shop right away. So, you know, some of you may never seen it. Uh, there's been hundreds of cars painted down here. I got out of body work well, a little while back and now I've kind of just been doing machine shop stuff down here and use this for storage. There has been hundreds of cars painted down here. You can see there's not a real lot of overspray on the floor other than a bunch of paint spillage. Um, now where I didn't have a spray booth, I designed this homemade panel here for the central air furnace all that kind of neat stuff. And then I had fresh air in, louvers you could change in a ductwork, pull air from outside. That way I had another air in here, exhaust out for multi-speed. Well, that's what that was. So all in all, for being homemade, it worked pretty good. Here's one I might share with you folks too. One of the biggest shockers amongst many others when I got here was the insurance company. Uh, they sent one of them people over to come and check on your building, which I'll have. And the lady asked me if I ever even painted a car in here. We weren't painting that day. <laughs> and there was nothing going on down here. And But here's what ticked me. Uh, I didn't have a spray booth, so they got just not that yeah, for that reason. Then it's wood structure building town, fire department, all kinds of things they had for excuses. And they were charging me $9,700 a year. And we're talking back in 1986 for insurance for this place. So as you might have already guessed, yeah, I paid by it a month. And uh, a couple times I was even a little late, but we got by. Now these supports 
would have originally went through the ceiling even down there and been in the work area. Well, I didn't want that. So what I come up with is I ran 2x10s, well, like all the other floor joists here, through and then anchored this onto them and cut them off so they're not showing downstairs. Now, this is one of the supports for the end wall. And what I did here, this is these are actually sitting on the beams that you've seen in the first floor. So after I cut them off, I put the porta power in here and put the load back on them, shingled under them, and then built this frame around to help hold them in place. To get heavy items upstairs, you can open this door here, grab the air hoist from down below, you hook it on a chain, which in turn hangs on the barn trolley. And then it's the air hoist that I use for that. And also the beams worked out perfect for the layout where you could run a vehicle in and use that trolley for pulling engines. These beams were all used. Yeah, we wire wheeled them, cleaned them up, and painted them. Now, the guy that lent me the cat is the one who I bought them from. And uh, he had a fork truck, a homemade one that articulated in the middle. So it didn't go high enough. So what I ended up doing, I put them pop crates. You put the uh, bottles in them, wooden pop crates. I put them on the forks and then I was able to get it high enough to get them installed. Now up on the second floor, my waste oil storage sits on them beams. And that's for my waste oil, homemade waste oil burner. And I painted them up and built a motor around them. Because annually the insurance company always comes through to review you and you want to make sure you keep them happy. Now a really neat safety thing that was my carpenter friend's idea was if somebody come in the driveway and it was slippery and took out the right sports right here, so he suggested that we put a solid wood beam where you can't see it inside the wall here. So that way if somebody comes in the driveway, takes that out, ceiling should stay put and nobody will get hurt. Well, tubers, I hope I covered everything here, so I'm going to hop in the house and commence to editing this. Hey, tubers! I thought it'd be neat to show you folks what it takes to produce one of these videos if you've never seen how this is all done. So, I'll give you a quick little demo here. Uh, this here is your work area. They call it the timeline. Now, these are all separate scenes which I have added for this video. This here would be pictures that I take with the camcorder, turn them into a picture, and resize them so I can do the picture in picture. So, this is one area for your picture in picture and your other area. If there's stuff only on this, then it's full screen as you're watching it. Now, anywhere, anywhere where there's a little orangish black box here, that's where stabilizer's been added or some kind of an enhancement or effect. The 2 Jeffs 1, the solid bar here, that would be from a little spinny thing you see always up in the corner that I put in my videos. And then for audio dubs, these are all separate audio dubs that I add in the video narrating it. So let's take the timeline here. I'll scroll it across and you can see all the separate scenes and cuts it took to produce this video. Up here is where you bring in files that you wish to edit and use for the timeline for making a video. Now you bring in older files which I've done for this one and you get down here further. These are the new pieces that I've shot for the more at the ending. We'll move down a little farther. These are all the audio dubs. And if we move down a little farther, this is where I've created pictures for you out of video, taking it out of photo albums and separate pictures I had. Well tubers, I hope you got some information out of here that'll be helpful to your journey in life. And I'd like to thank you for spending some time on my channel here. And I'd like to see you all back here again. Thanks for watching.